identified early on how important this was, and uh, you know, we're probably one of the first to bang away at it. Senator Worth said, I want to write a piece of legislation that addresses global warming. The first person I reached out to was Dr. Hansen, the distinguished senior scientist at NASA. A lot had changed between the middle 1970s when we first got interested in the problem and the 1980s, the late 1980s, because the real world was beginning to show signs that humans were affecting climate. That implies that we're really going to get a significant change a few decades downstream. My response was pretty immediate. This is a big deal. You know, we need to get working on a hearing. Seattle and other parts of the Northwest had their driest February in history. Irrigation reservoirs are 40 to 85 percent below normal levels. By the spring of 1988, there was a full-scale drought. The earliest fire season in memory has been declared. They're dredging around the clock on the once mighty, now shrunken Mississippi to free hundreds of barges. It was my perception that the media wanted to explain this drought and seemed to be at a tipping point on the issue of climate change. The evening before, I was lying on my bed in a hotel in Washington writing my testimony and listening to the Yankees baseball game. And I, I wrote my testimony out by hand. I do think that scientists have a moral obligation to point out the implications of their findings and try to do it as clearly as possible. I had a sense that it was going to be a good hearing and that his statement would be important. You could feel it in the room that this was a significant moment. Thank you for the opportunity to present the results of my research on the greenhouse effect, which has been carried out with my colleagues at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. I would like to draw three main conclusions. Number one, the Earth is warmer in 1988 than at any time in the history of instrumental measurements. Number two, the global warming is now large enough that we can ascribe with a high degree of confidence a cause and effect relationship to the greenhouse effect. And number three, our computer climate simulations indicate that the greenhouse effect is already large enough to begin to affect the probability of extreme events such as summer heat waves. Altogether, this evidence represents a very strong case, in my opinion, that the greenhouse effect has been detected and it is changing our climate now. That was a kind of a magic sentence. This was not environmental groups. This was not some green cabal. This was probably the lead climate scientist in the federal government making this statement. I realized I was going out on a limb. Not all scientists agreed with me that we were ready to say those things, but uh, they were based on sound physics and observations and models. It was as if the rocket had lifted off. I wrote on the hearing transcript, historic. And some experts are saying now that the whole world is heating up because of a global greenhouse effect. In the long run, it could mean devastating changes to all life on Earth. The next morning, the story was on the front page of the New York Times. There are no easy solutions. We're talking here about the use of gas and coal and oil. Scientists urge heavy conservation, a switch to solar energy, and a search for new power sources. Pragmatists would argue that we cannot change our energy habits overnight. Scientists say we had better get going. In those years, there was still a spirit of bipartisanship when really important challenges to the public interest uh, appeared. You could work across the uh, political aisle. I felt like tremendous progress was being made. There was greater awareness. There was public policy emerging. There was international negotiations developing. Momentum is on our side and it kind of opened up the world and you had the feeling, oh, wow, you know, this is really gonna change.